now that we've actually set up our uh, quadcopter fitted the flight controller it is time to do the settings for the flight controller so that we can actually get ready for flying binding again um, was covered in my first video in assembling uh, but it's fairly easy make sure you are bound if you haven't seen it just wait that 15 seconds after you turn on the flight controller as it will automatically go into bind mode go into your uh, RF set menu hit RX1 make sure your T select is enabled once the receiver is bound and you're done and you'll see the data show up on your on your home page on your dashboard you'll note that I have a lot of stuff set up on my dashboard here um, in my next video I'll touch a little bit more on it not in depth but there's so much telemetry data that you really want to remove some, most of the default stuff and just build your own home page to see all the information to actually set up the flight controller we are going to go into the telemetry menu I'm going to hit the little circle button on the right side on my MZ32 telemetry page come up this is the standard receiver page just telling you I have firmware QoS 6 installed that's the default firmware for for the well it came with it but it's also the latest version I want to check that and see any new version out there language choose your language long voltage depending on the battery you're using I'm using a 3s so I've got it set at 10.2 volts internal alarm temperature for the receiver 70 degrees this is the first different thing that you'll find on the receiver side and that's max altitude uh, in the US it's 400 foot I've left it at the default 100 because that's quite a bit under the 100 uh, 400 foot setting so I'm okay with that video channel if you have a, a smart audio view transmitter um, then you can connect to it and change the channels from the radio which is really cool I don't have one so I'm not going to touch on that alarm capacity I'm using a 1300 milliamp battery I've just changed it to 1100 for the moment as that'll suffice for me so that's it for the base menu nothing more to adjust there now we're going to go all the way to the end we're going to skip all of these other menus in the middle and go to the gyro assignment menu this is probably the most important one to do your setup on at first and that's why it's at the end you are wait what well it's because you're only going to touch this once you do the setup once and you're done you don't want to get to it again so the PIDs are right in the front because you want to probably come back and change those more often whereas this is once set and done and forget so you won't touch it again doing your gyro setup I've covered this in other videos but I'll do it here quickly again because it's fairly easy to do we'll just change that do setup to yes make sure I hit the enter button and now on a mode 2 radio move my right stick for roll all the way to the right then I take my quadcopter and roll it on its axis to the right and you can see that value changed for roll for Nick I move my right stick all the way forward on the mode 2 then I take my quadcopter and roll it forward past 45 degrees and that changed you see the highlight goes away as soon as it it's happy with the reading it got and then for your on my left stick all the way to the right highlights the field and I'm just going to rotate on the axis clockwise until that highlight goes away that's it I have now set up my uh, gyro assignment and this is important because now by default you know I think it expects that the battery connector points to the rear of your quadcopter in my case that's not true it points to the side and so you really have to tell it which way your gyro is mounted or your accelerometer is pointing on quadcopter so there it is done we're ready to fly this thing we're going to go to the next one which is the multicopter base menu in here you just tell it what type of frame you have in my case i have a an x frame um, you have two other options in here a plus and an inverted X inverted X is just different rotation on the motors in my case the normal X uh, motor 1 rotates clockwise motor 2 anti-clockwise etc where in inverted X those motors tend the other way around I believe that's the only difference there ESC that is uh, text the board that I am using which is the S3088 
If you have a different board, it probably would detect that properly. If you, for some reason or another, are not using one of the 4x ESCs provided by Grabner, you can go in here and change that. I don't know that you want to do that because it's so convenient to use, um, use those boards, but mine is a 3088, so we'll leave it at that. Current factor. This is a fudge factor that you can do. Right now, mine is left at 100%. It's to, to adjust the reading that you have, milliamp reading from your battery, so that it matches more accurately. So if you did your calibration, we'll talk that in a minute, and it's still not a quite right, you can come here and fudge that a little bit. Mode, that is just what mode is your ESC in. If you have a, a 3D version of the ESC, which you cannot get in the US at this point in time, then you'll come here and tell it that you have a 3D acro version. Um, whoops. If I selected that, I can go and select 3D Acro. I don't have it, so uh, I probably shouldn't set that to 3D. Min power. This is uh, the value above where the motors will start moving. 5%. Keep this at the minimum if you can. I'm not sure why you want more than that. It's just a safety in there. Freestyle. I'm uh, going to play with this one just a little bit to show you the power. Um, since I'm not going to go into PIDs specifically in this video, but to show you how you can tune things. Freestyle is another way to to take out some of the, the calibration on the eye of the PID. And, and to play with that, what I did here is I actually set up a channel. I connected a channel 13 to, to this value. And you can assign a channel to any of these PID settings that you have. So you can fine tune them and find out where the correct value is before you come back and, and hard code them. And you go, wait, why, why would you hard code them? Well, you're not going to remember where that slider was or that knob was that gave you the perfect value that you need. So yeah, go and fly, use the slider, find the value that you need, and then come back and hard code that value. You can see here, if I move this, I can see the value actually change. So when you find the right value that you need, to fly with, you can come back, see what that value is from the slider and then hard code it back into, into your radio. So it's set in there. You can also use something else. And this is something that uh, I think would be interested in. And that's that you can actually use a curve. And the way that you would do this, and you'll see I'm using channel 13 here. If I go to the controls, and go down to channel 13. Oops, I am at channel 13. You see, I actually assigned my channel 13 to my throttle stick. ST1 is my throttle stick. And then I went in and assigned a curve to that input. So at low throttle, I have high values in here. And then as I go to higher throttle values, I put that all the way to minimum. And that is to to give me better control over certain areas in my flight. Accordingly, a really, really um, powerful way to control that stuff. And also a way that you don't have to go and put on a slider or something, forget where the slider was. So uh, my preferred way of doing it. And uh, like I said, at some stage in the future, I'll actually do a PID video and, uh, and go into more detail. It will not be covered here. Forgot to change that. All right, so that's that's the setup for, for that. I'm not going to go into vibration filter. It has to do with props that's not properly balanced. You can set up a, uh, a vibration filter on here to help with that. Um, higher values would get you a better performance, I believe. Calibrate compass. Now, this is really important. You have to set up your compass is every time you go to a new field. So take the minute or two that's gonna take for you to do a compass calibration. Come in here, hit the value, change it to yes, and then rotate your quad clockwise a couple of times, rotate it to the roll direction a couple of times, and then in the nick direction a couple of times until this value changed from yes back to no, and then the calibration is done. So that teaches the compass calibration. Calibrate the current. Um, remember I talked about it on uh, current factor up there. This is where you do the actual calibration. So take the props off, turn them around, invert them, so that when you 
throttle up, it actually pushes the quad into the ground. So you're not actually flying. I mean, you can do it while flying, but um, it's probably best to do it on the ground so you don't have to to worry about it too much and have no other influences like wind, etc., on the quad itself. Uh, it'll give it a current. Yeah, so turn the props around, turn this value to yes, turn the throttle to about halfway. So the quad just can sit there, push itself into the ground at half throttle until this value changes back to, to no and the calibration is done. Calibrate position. This is probably the easiest of the calibrations to do. Just make sure your quad is sitting on a level flat surface, level being the important part. Change it to yes and hit enter. And after a second or two, it'll change back to no as it calibrated the accelerometers. That's what that is doing. It's just calibrating the accelerometers. And then the last is logging. I'm not going to go into that. It just logs values from, from your flight controller so that you can uh, either share it with Graupner if you want to do some fault finding or maybe you want to plot some things on uh, on a map somewhere you can use the logging to do that that's all there is to setting this up quickly the multicopter autopilot PIDs this is for when I go into autopilot mode watch my next video to see phases and how you go into autopilot um, this will help you tune your autopilot PID so you get smoother flight for maybe if you want to do videos, etc. Whereas the net first two menus, the multicopter yaw and multicopter roll neck menus is for attitude and rate modes. So uh, two different settings, but you'd come in here, do your PIDs. And uh, that's all there is to it. I uh, hope you uh, got something out of this video. Let me know if you in the comments if you need to see something else and uh, appreciate you watching. Thank you.